Hey folks, Rex Bear here with League Project. Thank you everybody for joining us this edition. We are going to be discussing the most current updates we have on Planet X and the binary star system that is being reported from around the globe. I've read a couple of comments recently on a video we did here about a week ago that said, well, if Planet X is really there, how come people that are astronomers, amateurs, saying, hey, I can see this heavenly body that shouldn't be there, and sending pictures. Well, they are. <laughs> We're getting them from all over the place. So is Steve Olson over at the Wormwood System Observer. Robert H. Evans Jr. is getting a ton of photos and friend requests from people that are seeing these strange anomalies in the sky from not only webcams, professional-grade cameras and observatories, phone cameras, pictures from high-end digital Nikons, etc. So there's a lot of evidence out there to point to a planetary body that shouldn't be there, at least from what we've been taught in school typically. So we've got about two dozen photos we're going to share with you that have been sent to Robert H. Evans Jr. from all over the world. And they've been sent in from different types of cameras, from observatories, etc. So we want to get your opinion on this. I do my best to be as neutral as possible. I actually think that some of them are just very strange anomalies, but many people have different opinions. So would like yours here at The Leak Project. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash clandestine time lord, to have access to the, all the latest podcasts, first and free. You do not have to pay to be a member with Leak Project and get access to this information. We pay for the equipment. We put together the time and effort to get the guests on the show. Uh, about a week ago, we did a podcast, and I thanked whoever it was that contributed $100 to the show. And then I read several comments after that that, oh, we're we're trolling for money. Well, folks, we're not. If you'd like to contribute, fantastic. If not, I think you're contributing just by listening to the shows, and I appreciate that. So thank you for all that you do, everybody that has been a part of this, and we will continue to bring you cutting-edge information from guests around the world that are at the tops of their fields, that are not going to be given the time of day in many of the mainstream brain drain media outlets and also, I would like to recommend if you have some information or photographs of Planet X, please send it to Bob or myself, guest bookings at leakproject.com is our email. And Robert H. Evans Jr. is the Facebook page for Bob here. And he's got probably over a thousand people that help him and contribute to this Planet X Nibiru phenomenon that many people are seeing. <laughs> Doing okay, thank you. That's great to have you. Now, this first picture that we're looking at here, what is this? Well, this one photograph we're looking at, uh, I forgot exactly where my friend said it was taken. I think it's up in the Soviet Union, somewhere around over there, where you're seeing our sun, which is just to the right. And then off to the left, you're seeing... Another one of those moons of Nibiru. Now, you can call these things planets, planet nine, planets of Nibiru, or moon of Nibiru. But as I've said before, we have eight of these things in our skies right now. So we're seeing them off and on. Uh, the problem is the Earth is orbiting counterclockwise right towards them or Nibiru itself. And these things are getting larger and larger and being seen clearer and clearer in our skies all around the planet. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty interesting shot right there. Now, I'm going to go to the next one below it. And it looks like this was sent out by... Pugmelia, Australia. Yes, they're seeing it down there in their skies. Now, I couldn't get a larger uh, uh, enhancement of that, but that's, again, one of... Nibiru's moons, planets. I mean, Nibiru is about the size of Jupiter, if not larger. So these things are about the size of our planet, planet Earth. Now, a lot of my, a lot of my friends are saying, Bob, if these things are real, why aren't they affecting the Earth? Well, they are affecting the Earth. The volcanic activity has been going up through the roof. Uh, earthquake activity has been on the rise. Our weather is really screwing up left and right. 
but no one's talking about this because it's in our skies. Everyone else is seeing it, but the news media will not talk about this stuff. So now you're seeing pictures from Australia, different people you know, uh, down under, down the lower part. Uh, this one here is from a newer friend. You can see the sun and at the very top of the sun, uh, Rex, with your arrow going down just to the top, you'll see a bump right there above our sun. That's what uh, this person took this image. And it's you know very clear to a lot of people who are following this that our sun is one object and here's this other object being seen right above it. Uh, let's see, she's from Canada, Quebec, uh, Anne-Marie. Anne Thank you, yes. Anne-Marie. From Quebec, Bissonnet. Canada. I hope I pronounced your last name properly. Hope we'll see more from you. Thank you. Sure. You know, the photographs are just coming in left and right. Uh, I'm getting them on you know, uh, my Facebook prime message uh, from emails. People are taking photographs of things in their skies using their, their iPad their iPhones or their iPads and sending them, you know, and you can only ignore this for so long. Okay. A lot of people, they want to go home. They have dinner, they relax next morning. They get the paper, they watch the morning news, they go back to work and they don't want to have anything else delve into that cycle they're in. And I hate to mention this last week, my wife and I were going on a, vacation down to Carlsbad and I had a small stroke when I was walking up here in uh, uh, Gary Street in San Francisco but if I'd gone into Kaiser to complain about the headache then we wouldn't have had our, our trip down to Carlsbad so I didn't say anything I still have a bad headache from it though. I'm sorry See, a lot, that, Bob. oh yeah you know a lot of people are, are paying attention to this because they want to know what they think is coming. These are not normally being seen in our skies for over 3,000 years. That's probably a smaller thing. There's a, there's a small one right there. And that large one is clearly something that's being hidden from our eyes, either by the ETs, which are intervening, or from our chemtrails. Numerous people have sent me photographs of a big round thing in the skies that they can't explain. It should not normally be there, but people are seeing them. A lot of the, uh, the all sky was turned off the other day. I was told uh, my internet has been really shaky over where we live. But you can clearly see these things, and there's the date and time right there. So a lot of my newer friends, I mean, just the other day I had 50 friend requests and it just took me a long time to even cut it down because I have my own jobs around this place here. I can't always sit on the internet. There's that thing up. See, it's an observatory where you're seeing east, west, north, south, and the observatories are seeing this stuff with their own multi-million dollar cameras. And it makes you wonder. Okay, it doesn't, doesn't make me wonder because I, I have a good enough idea what they are. And there's that red thing and there's that, that big circular type thing and our sun's off to the left. So and what I'm, you know, wondering, okay, um, I'm wondering if this is a reflection off of something else. Like, you know, if there's like another red object, there, something there out there. There is a good possibility of that, Rex, but I have to imagine that since this is a camera from an observatory, not my camera, not your camera, but the observatory has a set where they are not seeing reflections. Could be. Okay. And also, though, if you look, though, at the way that it's lined up, you know, you mm -hmm. look at this big circle here, right? And in my opinion, I think that this big circle is probably just a reflection of some sort. And, then and, and the person that took this photograph disagrees with you. Which is, to which is totally fine, and I just wanted to just, just let me get my two cents in here real quick. Why I feel this way is because of the way that it's lined up perfectly. If you look at the straight line here, I've got this mouse cursor that I'm going to try and give you a, a reference point. The way that this is perfectly off 
to the sure. right. And if you see this, like re these red dots here, I mean, obviously these could be a lot bigger if these are some type of planets or comets or some type of objects. And then if the right. sun is reflecting that, kind of like this color right here, you see this color red here reminds me of the same red color here. So, I mean, it, it could very well be, like you said, some type of moon or object that's being cloaked somewhat with the chemtrails. I mean, I wouldn't put that past. I'm just looking but, at but another seeing, alternative. Uh, but seeing something that large in our skies fooled me at first during 2015 when other people were catching this magnificently huge thing in our skies. I'm thinking, that thing can't be that close. But then... The person the, that caught the photographs over Florence, Italy on January 8th clearly showed something that big on Italy's horizon. So when I see something that big in our skies, it doesn't phase me anymore. Um, I don't know how close we are to these things. Only the powers that be know that, that much information. I don't know how large these planets or moons are. Um, it's you know a little bit, a little bit, and and here you, you see where the person put a this, refraction on the upper one. They I, thought it was a refraction of something. This one's from uh, Ken Williams. I just want to give a shout out because he's been sending me photos now for over a month, and we tried to do a couple of shows with sure. Ken and Bob, and it was funny because both times we tried to put together a show. Uh, the first one, we had some technical difficulties on his end. The second time, we spent over four hours recording this podcast. And then when we got finished with it, all the lights were flashing and the whole thing was just totally wild. So we basically had to scrap it. Now, sure. you know, maybe it was just user error. I mean, I'm sure that's what it was. But look at these pictures right here. I mean, he takes these from sky cams and right. he has a very uh, prestigious position in the medical industry where he knows how to read certain charts and visuals that most people aren't trained for. And he started looking at these sky cams over a year ago before he started seeing these things. He used to look at it just to, to spare to waste time when he didn't have something to do in between work. And then he noticed these things start coming around about a year ago, and he says they're getting closer and closer. Yes, and they closer are. And, and that's closer. because the Earth is orbiting towards them. Nibiru and its moons or planets is on a clockwise orbit through our system and out. The Earth, all the way, all of our planets except for Pluto, the dwarf planet Pluto orbit counterclockwise in our own system. So we're heading from the right to the left, right towards them. That's why they are growing larger and larger in our skies. The last person who knew about this was Ipawur, an Egyptian scribe, back around 13, 1613 BC. And he said the destroyer was a reddish mass in their skies, and it took up basically almost one fifth of the of the skies from the horizon on up into the upper atmosphere. So they saw these things really large in their skies then, and we're seeing a red mass in our skies now. The Holy Bible calls it wormwood. The Hopi people here in the United States call it the red kachina. So, you know, there's that big red mass being seen in the skies. It's not our moon, because our moon is usually white with the, uh, the black areas, you know, asteroid type or meteor shower type areas. So, you know, we haven't seen anything like this for 3,000 something years. And that's why everyone's getting confused. That's why some people are really just taking one photograph after the other, after the other, fancy telescopes using the astronomy type stuff like this one picture from here, Savannah Skies, Australia, one of their observatories down there. You can clearly see it's an observatory when you see the print where it says north, south, east, and west. That's an observatory a photograph. You can see all that red. Yes. And without knowing what what was in their skies, and that could just be the clouds, 
but the huge red circular thing is clearly one of the things we're seeing in our skies. It's another picture and, Kent, uh, Ken sent us from the sky cams. He took this off of his, sure. um, not iPhone, but what are they called? The, the tablets that Mac makes. So that this right here he thinks is the nemesis. He says that he didn't see this a year ago, and it's now slowly nemesis, even creeping in. Or the nemesis, red kachina. Right. Nemesis, Nibiru, what's the other term? Ho, ho, uh, H-O, Columbus. I uh, never could pronounce that correct. Uh, we've been told... Archibolus or something like that. There you go. We've been told over the years different names for this thing. And a lot of it's been misinformation. Uh, a lot of it's been, you know, deliberately put out to, no, this is just this one thing. No, it's Planet Nine. No, it's Nibiru. No, Nibiru doesn't exist. Uh, it's this. It's that. It's this. It's that. You know, uh, back in What does this look like to you, Bob? That looks, uh, almost look like, looks like one of the kids. Uh, the camera images from the Soho where you have, you're pointing to that long arm that holds that big disc out in front of the camera. I honestly don't know what that is because uh, that wasn't one of my photographs. There's that big red thing in the sky down there. So we get the sun right down there and in, in virtually in the center right there. And then we've got the big red thing up there. Some of these cameras, I'm quite sure they hold... They have an arm reaching out to hold this disc at a certain distance from the camera lens. And that disc hides all of the parts coming off our sun so it's not being blinded by looking at the sun exactly itself. Now, this one's interesting because I call this one, or no, this isn't one I call Space Skittles. There's one I'm going to show you in a minute that looks like all these different colored planets out there. There's that big red disc down in the right corner right there. You know, just like we talked a little while, you know, yes, we've seen between five and six of these things in our skies since 2015 with our own eyes. But we leaked the fact that our northern observatories have known and show right now that there are eight objects being seen in our skies that we cannot see. So they're keeping it very quiet. They know there are eight things other than our moon up in the skies. So look at this red dot right here. See it? I see it. Okay. And then look straight ahead and virtually a straight line there. You've got the, the red... Obviously, what you think is the red Kachina or the you know this big moon or something. Right now, could it possibly be a reflection off of this red dot right here, which could possibly be the moon or something else? Because I can't put a reference point to that size well, of how big this, it is. This is not one of my photographs, probably from your friend. Um, I have to assume, and the assume part makes you know everyone knows what assume stands for. We have to assume that everyone is looking at these images and they're looking for that fake image or the Photoshop image or the uh, other image that we're putting it forward as this. And they're just waiting for us to show something that they can clear. Here, he's showing pictures that are fake. There, there's flares, there's lens flares here, there's Photoshop here, there's whatever here. And I'm quite sure your friend would not have sent you this photograph if it was fake. I mean, I don't think that he did any Photoshop. That's not at all what I'm getting to. I'm just, I mean, I clearly, this is the picture that he took off of the okay. observer. What I'm getting at but, is I'm wondering okay. if that's like a sun reflection, a light reflection off of that now red I object have right to, there. Now, I have to assume that this photograph was taken by an observatory camera because it was still showing the north, south, east, west there, that they have eliminated all those things from every photograph that camera takes, okay? That they have looked at under times when it would have had a, a lens flare or this or that. 
because these cameras are in an observatory up on top and they have to make sure these photographs are spec perfect. Otherwise, why have it there if it's going to be affected by this or that or this or this? And well, that's I mean, exactly. In, in this picture here, if you look at the sun and you look at all the stuff around it, you can tell a lot of this is lens flare, right? I am not a photographic expert, so I cannot tell you one way or the other. I would be lying. So, and then I'm looking at this red, you know, the red anomaly down here again, and I can see if you look straight above it, there's this red mass again. Just and, right there. Yeah. Now, if you now if you had the camera in your own hand, you could move it right or left, and you could see where possibly a lens flare was. This being a stationary camera underneath a dome in an observatory, I can't answer anything beyond that. You know, what I can say, though, is it's, it's certainly a strange anomaly, and it keeps coming up about the same size, and right. it's coming up multiple days, different observatories, different cameras, mm -hmm. different people, so, and one thing that's staying the same is about the size of it. I mean, it's right. staying the same, so... I mean, there could be something there. I'm just trying to look at this as analytical as possible. And, and I you know. understand it completely. Now let's go to and this. I'm actually, I'm actually thankful you do this stuff because of the fact that we're just sending in photographs to you with no warning or any idea how they were taken. Then it all comes back on top of you. So I'm glad you are. Is this real, Bob? Is it not real? Well, I mean, here's the thing is we got to be because there's been pictures that I've gotten before that I looked at at first and I said, you know, that's that's pretty freaking cool. And then I've done some research into it and there's been several pictures that I found and I've been able to, to debunk them personally. Sure. So as now I think that's now, one thing that I might do here one of these days right. is do a show on all of those pictures that look so cool, but you can show, hey, no, it, it looks good and people had the right intents. They weren't trying to put a, a veil over anybody, but what they didn't know is this is actually an anomaly that causes that to look right. like a planet. But here's a pretty cool picture too, Bob. Look at this now, one. Now, this one I'm a little bit leery of because you have a Nibiru right there with an arrow. Nibiru orbits between Jupiter and Mars, and it's supposedly about the same size as Jupiter. Now, any of us looking up into the skies will see a, a little tiny dot showing Jupiter. Okay? Okay. Now, supposedly, Nibiru has swung down through our system at about a 35 to 40 degree angle, has already gone around our sun, and it's on its way out at this point in time. So, pointing to whatever there, I honestly don't know if that's what we're seeing. I am not a expert on this. So, when you show something that shows star patterns from whatever program I know a lot of these programs were deliberately screwed up on back in 2007 2008 where they actually had a part of the sky blanked out Microsoft Worldwide Telescope was really bad for that so was Google Earth Sky and all the other programs had the same thing so now they're showing where things should be. Now, okay, back in 1983, NASA's people said they saw something with the IRIS infrared satellite well beyond Pluto, and they said it was four to eight times the size of our Earth. And NASA finally came, the scientists finally came in, and they said, no, 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 these guys didn't know what they're doing. They shouldn't have caused a, 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 a news conference for this. And they pulled all the stories. And now all of a sudden, within the last year, we've got, hey, here's Planet Nine. It's real. It's coming in. But we won't see it for 10,000 years. And it's between eight to ten times the size of the planet Earth. I'm sorry. 
they're all playing with the same information they knew the stuff was coming in. We are seeing eight things, whether they are called planets of Nibiru or moons of Nibiru. They all have different colors to them, and we're seeing them in our skies. They're not 10,000 light years away. They're here. How close are we going to get to them? See, either the red one has a very strong electromagnetic pull, gravitational pull, or all of them possibly in an alignment, which would really play heck with the gravitational pull. These things have caused at least three pole shifts, or the proper terms called Earth crustal displacement, where the Earth's crust shifts over the mantle. Okay? Where the Earth's crust is a very thin crust compared to the rest of the planet Earth, and the mantle, then the inner core is underneath, and they're liquid like. So the hard crust can supposedly in theory, shift over the mantle. And that's what everyone, or at least Norway, China, they've all been preparing for because they think the continents are going to be in new positions. In the movie 2012, the new North Pole was up in uh, uh, Wisconsin, the United States, but it also caused a magnetic pole reversal which the scientists said, no, that's the South Pole now. And that's why the Chinese built all these huge cities, fully ready for everyone to go into, but they're being kept uh, abandoned. Everyone's being forcibly kept out of them. That's why we've been putting M1 Abrams battle tanks up in caves up in Norway and all the other equipment to back them up. Because they know Norway will be on the other side of the earth, will be nice and relatively warm instead of being frozen. That's why they built the emergency seed vaults where they did. Because that also incurs a possible flood. And if fire from the sky comes down, just like the Bible said it did, just like Ippower said it happened, then they have all the seeds to replant everything around the planet Earth. New World Order. The New World Order loves you. <laughs> Give your soul, just take the microchip and you'll be fed well. Yeah, right. Now, everyone is saying there's going to be a debris field and the Earth is going to be swinging right through it. Because uh, the planet Nibiru, it probably has debris right behind it right alongside it, in front of it. And so should all of these moons, because their gravitational pull, as they swing through space, they drag all this stuff with them. Now, during the Exodus, which was 1613 B.C., Ippower, just like the Holy Bible said, a huge amount of rocks were falling from the skies, and they were destroying almost everything they were hitting. Uh, Mosai of China said the same thing for the same amount of days, usually about 10 days, when all these rocks came down out of the skies. So yes, we will be going through a, uh, uh, we'll be, the earth will be going through their, their, their tail of debris. Now, that one there, if you look very closely at it, you can almost see stripes on it. Now, the stripes, yeah. the only one I've seen that has stripes is that one that was first seen over Antarctica. And then my friend Sharon, she, she caught it in her skies over Illinois. And very clear, it made it look very nice and blue in our skies with black stripes. None of the other ones of the, of the five or six that I have photographs of have the same type of stripes as that first one, which we've seen. So, you know, and look how big it is in the skies right there. 
Now, some of the people down there around near Sumatra, uh, they've actually caught two suns rising at sunrise, and they're both the same diameter in their skies, which means whatever, whichever one of the moons they were seeing was very large. And a lot of the webcams, they've been turning them off. You can just see the, the dot next to our sun over there on that left side. You can see like a round dot right there. Dill Shout Martin. out to Dill Martin. Thank you, Dill. Yeah, a lot of people, are, they know people are watching it and they're, they're, they're looking through the webcams looking for it. And they're seeing it left and right. That one's from Dawn Hall. She's up in uh, Washington State. And she has a really fancy camera which can see into the infrared band. And the next one down is where she inverted the photograph. Seeing that here's our sun and there's that black dot just down below it, slightly to the right, right there. When you invert a photograph, that eliminates any lens flare because lens flare would be eliminated just by inverting it so that shows a very strong thing where that arrow is pointing to right there and then she jumped it up to the enlargement just to the left right of that photo right there you know, you got some really nice, good people out there that have the cameras, they have the program. Now, Dawn Hull, she has had the Men in Black check, seriously, check out her. She's out in the boonies up there in, in uh, uh, up there in, and she's actually had her computer taken down several times or her internet taken off. Now, she has a really big dog, and the dog is always seeing something in their backyard, and it's gone after it several times. But she stayed with this, just as I have, even though what she th believes is happening. Well, it says that that objects and all the shots that she's taken with a specific camera, it's a Nikon, Right, and um, it's in the same general area she claims. So let's yeah, let's let's flip through them again here real quick. We'll kind of bounce through these and see. Yeah. Hmm. That's interesting. I mean, when you first look at that, it looks like a just a really cool lens flare almost. But you know, because it's so perfect, right? But then exactly. But when you enlarge these photographs up to something where you can clearly see on the screen, which a lot of my friends have done this, then suddenly the camera does different things to it when you have to enlarge it that far up. It's an so icon it, from the fifth dimension. It, yes. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Now, also, I just wanted to throw this out there again. You know, I mean, this is the article that came out that says Caltech researchers find evidence of a real ninth planet and they say it's about 10 times that of Earth. It orbits 20 times farther from the sun. And they basically say... Which is almost exactly what the scientists said back in 1983. When I tried they to first... get these guys on the show, Bob. Sorry to interrupt. I tried to get these guys on the show, and they haven't got back to me. And I've tried sending them uh, emails, and they haven't got back to me either. Huh. Maybe the board got them. Or maybe they're just told to say this much and don't mention anything further. Exactly. You see, back in 1983, the scientists said the thing was between four to eight times the size of, of the Earth. And NASA knew in 2009 when they leaked information that the Nibiru would be... 20 astronomical units away from orbiting through our solar system on December 21st, 2012. And that's why no one saw anything at the end of the Mayan calendar. 
And my astronomical astronomer friend said, no, you're going to start seeing this about December of 2014. And that's when all the photographs started coming in. And now one of my friends has said that this thing will be very clear in our skies by June of this year. Now these things have gotten larger and larger and larger in our skies. And that's because of orbital paths. The Earth is orbiting right towards Nibiru or these moons and is showing up clearer and clearer in our skies now, no matter what the chemtrails are trying to hide it with. And too many people are, sh are sending in photographs like that one right there, showing that big striped moon. And that, that, that thing is larger than our moon in that skies. I want anyone who sees this stuff to try and be prepared for it. When you're prepared, you will not freak out and panic. Because that's what the governments around the planet are actually counting on that the population will start to freak out, panic, and then they'll be able to use martial law or martial law type laws against them. Now, one of my friends says to be prepared for this. No if, ands, or buts. If you're prepared, you have a fighting chance to be a survivor. Now, this thing has come through three times already now. Only those who survived were prepared for it. Now, I think I sent you one of the contacts. Over in Japan, they make these uh, orange balls which can hold up to four people. And they, they built these things after the large tsunami they had a couple years back. And I'm not trying to push this Japanese company's things, but if all you have is a couple moments notice to get into something that will float, then this thing has portholes, it has vents, it has a weight on the bottom part so you won't go rolling down you know, like inside a huge bowling ball. I don't know how much they cost, but Anything that can save your life, either by being a flotation device or something. Because I'm not surprised I'm seeing numerous things showing up on Facebook now saying, this is when the world ends. This is when the world ends. This is what's going to happen. I hate using dates. Because when that date doesn't happen, then I'm just a liar. Period. No ifs, ands, or buts. Well, I, that's good. I don't know what's going to happen. Okay, I can only go by ancient tales of what happened the other times this thing came through. The Hopi said that the third Hopi world ended by water. That was Noah's flood. Okay, and that happened about twelve thousand nine hundred something years ago. Okay. Zaya Sudra's flood, if you listen to a different type of person. Then it happened again, but only partially during the Exodus, because during the Exodus, Emperor said that all the stars moved to new positions in the skies. The sun and the moon rose and set in new positions. That's a pole shift, earth crustal displacement. Um, the Hopi prophecy said that during, at the end of the third Hopi world, this thing also caused the earth's rotation to reverse. And they're hoping that now at the end of the fourth Hopi world, it will re-reverse where it was back to its normal rotation. I don't know what the other Native American uh, tribes have to say. And very few have mentioned any of this. You know, so I can just, all I can do is go by ancient tales from the Chinese 
to the Egyptians to say this is what happened during this last time. What have you heard from the Chinese? Mosai of China, in his book five, said that for almost 10 days it rained rocks and sand from the skies. It was a time of intense heat. It caused many forest fires all over China. And then it was a time of intense cold, which they couldn't explain then. They said three gods came down and aligned themselves one warlord. And to punish the other warlords for not bowing down, this is what they supposedly brought down on, on all everyone. That was from roughly 1600 B.C. The, the ancient Greek island of Thera ex, erupted and exploded right around 1613 B.C. So that's a 13-year ballpark time to go from what Ippawar set down to what Mosai of China set down. That's just too close Right in there. Ippawar said volcanic ash was falling all over Egypt. Then when the pharaoh, which was a Hyksos pharaoh, not Egyptian pharaoh, when the pharaoh caught up with them up in the saltwater marsh, the pharaoh's troops went after the Hebrews. Because Ippawar says, and he uses the word Kebrews, K-E-B-E-W-S. Now, when you try and translate this thing over and over and over over the years, that's where they, they put down, they put down what we, what I call Kebrews, K-E-B-E-W-S. The Hyksos were a Canaanite people which came into Egypt during the 12th Egyptian dynasty, took over the upper part of the Egypt up by the Nile Valley until the end of the 17th Egyptian dynasty. Achmos and his brother were Egyptians from Lower Egypt. They kicked the Hyksos out of Egypt and the Egyptian army chased the Hyksos up towards what's now Jerusalem. So were there two exoduses, the Hyksos and the Hebrews, or was there only one exodus because they were both one and the same? Ancient history does not define one versus the other. They say the Hyksos were a Canaanite people. So I'm not trying to say one or the other. I'm just trying to say what ancient history says these people were. Achmos in Hebrew means brother of Moses. So that backs up the Jewish ancient history. That yes, Moses was there. Achmos was his brother. And no one wants to talk about it because it would set off the Muslims versus the Jewish versus the Christians. But a lot of the ancient astronaut shows are all mentioning it now. So. This did happen. The Exodus did happen. And I have a date for it now because they actually found an olive tree on the island of Santorini right at the base of all the ash. And they dated it to 1613 B.C. Since Ippawar mentions there was volcanic ash and that they heard a tremendous roar when they were up near the Mediterranean in a saltwater marsh. That's when the ancient island of Thera erupted and exploded. Now it's called Santorini.
the only volcano I've been able to find that was erupting during that time was the ancient Greek island of Thera. So that's able to put that tremendous detail, the entire account of when the destroyer was first seen in their skies again. The interesting part is that before it was seen, they kept hearing what they called 10,000 trumpets in their airs. So anyone listening with their ears was hearing this weird sound of what they called 10,000 trumpets. Numerous people around this planet right now are hearing that weird sound in their skies. From Japan to China to Europe to over the United States, they're what? Bob, what is that weird sound we're hearing? Well, since I cannot hear it myself, I can only describe how it was heard before. And, it's, and I'm putting the entire excerpts, which I typed from the Colbrin, saying exactly what they were hearing. And that sound did not disappear until the destroyer was not being seen in their skies anymore which was up to about two weeks after when it came, when the shit, when the sheet hit the fan. Because Akmos became Pharaoh somewhere around 1550 BC. And other tales said it was still dark. This smoke-like darkness was in the skies for almost two weeks after the, dis the destroyer disappeared from the skies. It was so thick, they could not light campfires. It was putting out torches. Now just imagine what it was doing to their breathing also, geez. And that's what a lot of my, my friends on Facebook, they're pulling up the passages from the Bible. And they're saying that this, this happened then, describing how dark it was or what this happened or this happened. You actually have two accounts. One is an, Egypt, an ancient Egyptian account. The other is from the Holy Bible. I'm not knocking one or the other. Being a researcher, I have to walk a very thin line on that sword. Here's the ancient account from the Egyptians. Here's the Holy Bible. And they virtually match as a carbon copy of each other. Seems like uh, there's a lot of parallels now with... There are you know, too many parallels. Too many. You know, if you're one of those people that likes to put a thumbtack up on a big uh, cork board from each account... They, they point towards something coming up. What makes it worse is that that's why the governments all around the planet built all these deep underground military bases. And these bases are about 2,000 feet underground. Georgia Guidestone said very clearly, never let the population go above 500 million again. That points to a 95% depopulation of the entire planet. I'm going to read off the Georgia Guidestones real quick because if sure, you read through them, <laughs> the first one is obviously the kicker. You know, maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature. Mm -hmm. I mean, it sounds good. It, it sounds like a, a good idea as, as far as the balance thing goes, but certainly with 7 billion people, what are you going to do with the other 6.5 billion you know, is there a spaceship we can put them in and go travel the stars? Probably not. Um, but here, let's go through the next one. Guide reproduction wisely, improving fitness and diversity. I mean, what's wrong with that? I think that's awesome. Unite, right. hu unite humanity with a living new language. Now, that one I could look at as well. I could certainly see how people would want to be able to understand each other better from other parts of the world. Yet, does that mean that we all have to go to that specific language? I mean, could there be more detail on that? Let's go to number four. 
rule passion, faith, tradition, and all things with tempered reason. Uh, Certainly, that seems like a good idea to keep balance within your emotions as well. However, I could see the implications on both sides of that. Right. Let's go to number five. Protect people and nations with fair laws and just courts. Well, certainly fair laws and just courts, that seems like a fantastic idea. But who decides what's fair and who comes up with what's just? And then number six. Let's let all nations rule internally, resolving external disputes in a world court. Hmm. Well, that sounds like... A world court. Hmm. That sounds like a lot like the one world government right there. And there will be one. Uh, there's cert- well, you know what? I think there already is. I mean, certainly you've got multiple governments yet at the very top levels, even when you talk to people that are very high up in politics and in corporations, and you ask them, hey, do you really think that there's a possibility that we're going to go to war with China or that they're a threat? No, absolutely not, because they want to play ball just like we do, because we're all a part of this worldwide web game, this worldwide right. economy. And what they're more worried about are people that are going to go off rogue and do things independently. You know, people that actually have the skills like retired veterans and such that didn't like to be used as guinea pigs in wars and lied to and injected with uh, experimental vaccines that had horrible poisons in them, and they're pretty upset about it. Those are the people I think that the uh, super elitists that are running things are worried about most because they've actually been trained to do things. Now, let's go to number seven. Avoid petty laws and useless officials. Well, hey, let's make that number one, guys. Let's do that as the number one agenda. Avoid petty laws and useless officials. That would take away about 99% of the rules and regulations out there right now, in my opinion. Sure. Uh, Balance personal rights with social duties. Hmm. Well, what do you mean by balance personal rights and what are your social duties? I'm not sure about that. Prize truth. This is number nine. Prize truth, beauty, love, seeking harmony with the infinite. Well, I mean, gee, that sounds like the the key to the kingdom right there. If if truth is genuine, if beauty, love, and the harmony with the infinite, divine providence, I mean, that's that sounds fantastic. Yet, who is their infinite? Who is their harmony that they want to have with? And then number 10, be not a cancer of the earth. Leave room for nature. Leave room for nature. Now, Once again, I think that that's a good idea. I mean, certainly a lot of people are very wasteful, and if you look at a lot of the damage we've done to the earth, it's because of corporatocracy and this overzealous thinking of we can just consume, 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 and not give back. I mean, if we keep going the way that we are, what is it going to be like for our great, great, great grandchildren on Mm -hmm. this planet, you know? So, I mean, definitely we got to think about those opportunities. However, I feel that those technologies already exist, Bob, and they're being suppressed by those that don't want that information being out there. I mean, here's another thing. Ladies and gentlemen, think about this. If you had free energy, how much more control would that give you? Uh, If you didn't have to rely on utility companies to provide power for your appliances, your heat, and everything else that you do that needs power, it would certainly give you a lot more freedoms. I mean, think about the ways you could drive and get from point A to point B. Let's look at the military applications. If there's free energy, just think of what certain tanks and other weapons or automobiles or airplanes or jets could be doing without having to refuel every certain amount of miles. I mean, it could just change the entire globe. So all these things sound great. It just seems, except for the first one, obviously, and there's some ones in there that make you go, hmm, but what we need to do is just be aware of what's going on, and that's why it's great that, Bob, you've got such an awesome network on your Facebook page, Robert H. Evans Jr. If you guys have information about Planet X or this binary star system, please send it in to Bob because he will make sure to get back to you, and he's just got an entire network now, an armada of people that are working together trying to expose this information, so... Uh, I appreciate everybody joining us tonight here at The Leak Project. It's been great having you all here with us. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash clandestinetimelord. We do these shows for free. We don't charge for memberships. And appreciate everything you do, folks. Make sure to stay safe. Be the change that you want to see. This is Rex Bear.
Hey folks, Rex Bear here with Leak Project. Thank you everybody for joining us this edition. We are going to be discussing the most current updates we have on Planet X and the binary star system that is being reported from around the globe. I've read a couple of comments recently on a video we did here about a week ago that said, well, if Planet X is really there, how come people that are astronomers, amateurs, saying, hey, I can see this heavenly body that shouldn't be there, and sending pictures. Well, they are. <laughs> We're getting them from all over the place. So is Steve Olson over at the Wormwood System Observer. Robert H. Evans Jr. is getting a ton of photos and friend requests from people that are seeing these strange anomalies in the sky from not only webcams, professional-grade cameras and observatories, phone cameras, pictures from high end. If you'd like to contribute, fantastic. If not, I think you're contributing just by listening to the shows, and I appreciate that. So thank you for all that you do, everybody that has been a part of this, and we will continue to bring you cutting-edge information from guests around the world that are at the tops of their fields, that are not going to be given the time of day in many of the mainstream, brain drain media outlets. And also, I would like to recommend if you have some information or photographs of Planet X, please send it to Bob or myself. Guest bookings at leakproject.com is our email. And Robert H. Evans Jr. is the Facebook page for Bob here. And he's got probably over a thousand people that help him and contribute to this Planet X Nibiru phenomenon that many people are seeing. <laughs> Doing okay, thank you. That's great to have you. Now, this first picture that we're looking at here, what is this? Well, this one photograph we're looking at, uh, I forgot exactly where my friend said it was taken. I think it's up in the Soviet Union, somewhere around over there. Digital Nikons, etc. So there's a lot of evidence out there to point to a planetary body that shouldn't be there, at least from what we've been taught in school typically. So we've got about two dozen photos we're going to share with you that have been sent to Robert H. Evans Jr. from all over the world. And they've been sent in from different types of cameras, from observatories, etc. So we want to get your opinion on this. I do my best to be as neutral as possible. I actually think that some of them are just very strange anomalies. But Many people have different opinions. So would like yours here at The Leak Project, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash clandestine time lord, to have access to the, all the latest podcasts, first and free. You do not have to pay to be a member with Leak Project and get access to this information. We pay for the equipment. We put together the time and effort to get the guests on the show. Uh, about a week ago, we did a podcast, and I thanked whoever it was that contributed $100 to the show. And then I read several comments after that that, oh, we're, we're trolling for money. Well, folks, we're not. We're about the size of our planet, planet Earth. Now, a lot, of my, a lot of my friends are saying, Bob, if these things are real, why aren't they affecting the Earth? Well, they are affecting the Earth. The volcanic activity has been going up through the roof. Uh, earthquake activity has been on the rise. Our weather is really screwing up left and right. But no one's talking about this because it's in our skies. Everyone else is seeing it, but the news media will not talk about this stuff. So now you're seeing pictures from Australia, different people you know, uh, down under, down the lower part. Uh, this one here is from a newer friend. You can see the sun at the very top of the sun, uh, Rex, with your arrow going down. Just to the top, you'll see a bump right there above our sun. That's what uh, this person took this image. And it's you know very clear to a lot of people who are following this that our sun is one object, and here's this other object being seen right above it. Uh, let's see, she's from Canada, Quebec, where you're seeing our sun, which is just to the right. And then off to the left you're seeing another one of those moons of Nibiru. Now, you can call these things planets, planet nine, planets of Nibiru, or moon of Nibiru. 
But as I've said before, we have eight of these things in our skies right now. So we're seeing them off and on. Uh, the problem is the Earth is orbiting counterclockwise right towards them or Nibiru itself. And these things are getting larger and larger and being seen clearer and clearer in our skies all around the planet. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty interesting shot right there. Now, I'm going to go to the next one below it, and it looks like this was sent out by... Papamalia, Australia, yes, they're seeing it down there in their skies. Now, I couldn't get a larger uh, uh, enhancement of that, but that's, again, one of Nibiru's moon's planets. I mean, Nibiru is about the size of Jupiter, if not larger, so these things are...